The following program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents Normal Show Live Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator. Bellville. Good afternoon, tokers and toquettes, and welcome. It is Tuesday, September 20th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for joining us. We've got a packed studio audience here for our episode today. We're so glad to have everyone here, and let's get to the introductions. We start, first of all, with the return of the pirate, Ganja John. What's up, Russ? You're alive. You've yes. made it. You've survived. Barely. <laughs> barely. Just barely. Just barely. We'll talk more about that in Toker Talk Radio an hour or two, but I hope you're feeling okay. Yeah, I feel fine. All right. Good to hear it. Also here in studio with us, we've got Wiz Coleco hanging out. How you doing, Wiz? Uh, pretty good, man. I'm glad to be back for the last few remaining days before school starts. Yeah. How many days you got? I start next Monday. Next so the Monday. the rest of this week. Oh, no. Back to the books. All right. Also joining us from our virtual studio in beautiful Grastoria, Oregon, is the lovely Cannabis Carrie. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing great. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you. Also in studio today, uh, Todd Armstrong for his Toker topic. What's our topic today, Todd? Uh, from Kiryu K gives a weed around the world. Weed around the world. We'll talk about that here at the end of the show. Also joining us on the show today at half past the hour, Isaiah Valdez from uh, Idaho Normal will be calling in. Uh, we're going to talk to him about the Idaho Hope Fest, and that's Hemp Offers People Everything. Hope Fest. It's the first Hemp Fest to be held in Boise, Idaho uh, at the Julia Davis Park. I'm going to be there this Sunday. It's just a one-day festival just on Sunday. I will be there on Sunday as well as a number of members of the crew and family of uh, Normal Show Live. Uh, I'm not sure who, who all's going yet, but we'll get it all figured out an hour or two as well. Uh, we've got our Electric Tuesday today. Cannabis Cure is with us as well. I saw him walking in just earlier. We got some music from Ganja White Knight, a tune called Confession. But before we get to all of that we always start with our hemp headlines at the top of the hour and that's cannabis carry what do we got in the news today uh, well today we have another um sad story oh sad story with our skype there too with uh cannabis carry on that end but we've got a story uh, about a garden shooting two men that were uh protecting their marijuana garden and a terrible shooting ensued from there uh jerry brown the uh, governor of california has signed ab 1300 a bill that will make it easier to uh for the uh the people that don't like dispensaries to get them shut down in california the in harmony wellness uh dispensary has uh, changed their business model and reopened we'll talk a little bit more about that and the washington state democrats are going to be supporting i-502 the uh, NAW petition new approach washington the controversial legalization measure that would institute a five nanogram per milliliter duid for cannabis we'll get all of that and cannabis carry back on the line right after this it's normal show live this is normal show live the voice of the marijuana nation Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. 
Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Is it 420 yet? This is Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, and you're tuned into Normal's Audio Stash. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating... I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. We're having some difficulty getting Cannabis Carry's uh, Skype connection to come back up on her end, so I will bring you the uh, Normal News today. A Bay Area, California man is facing charges after confessing to shooting two people in the head while protecting his medical marijuana garden. According to the Butte County Sheriff's Office, 23-year-old Andrew Gatley of San Jose contacted deputies and confessed to shooting two people with a sawed-off shotgun while protecting a medical marijuana crop in the East Oroville area Monday night. Around 11.30 p.m., the Sheriff's Office was noted notified about two possible victims in the area. When they arrived, they found a man and woman walking along with walking along the road with possible gunshot wounds to their heads. The victims were identified as Vic, Vincent Rex, age 45, and Linda White, age 39, both of Oroville. Both were taken to the hospital for treatment. Rex was treated and released. White left the hospital before being released. Deputies arrested Gatley, the grower, and another San Jose man, 22-year-old Dennis Buchanan, in connection to the shooting. Gatlin Gatley is facing two counts of assault with a deadly weapon and possession of a short-barreled shotgun. Buchanan was arrested for possession of a short-barreled shotgun and two counts of accessory to assault with a deadly weapon. Both men were booked into the Butte County Jail. Bail is set for $135,000 each. Boy, uh, once again, a story that shows you the diff- the problems of marijuana prohibition. You know, when the average person out there hearing this story that isn't a part of our movement hears this, they think, ah, medical marijuana, guns, shootings, crime. And it's important that we emphasize that this is the problem of prohibition. This is not happening uh, over people's, uh, you know, over people's medicine cabinets in in large part. It's happening over medical marijuana because we've made it so hard to access and so much more expensive than it needs to be. And people, if you're out there growing, uh, you don't need to be using deadly force to protect your gardens. No plant, no medicine is worth that. Uh, We don't need to be escalating the violence, especially as we're trying to convince people that this is a safe and effective medicine. Uh, so, you know, it, it, you know we, we can have security cameras, you know, calling the authorities. Uh, there's all sorts of things we can do here, have have dogs. But but deadly force is definitely nothing you should ever be using to guard a marijuana crop. <laughs> Windsor, Colorado was one of a handful of towns that in Colorado that forced medical marijuana dispensaries out of town by way of a citizen-initiated vote. The largest dispensary at the time, in Harmony Wellness, was forced to close their doors of their popular business. The dispensary was founded in 2008 and ran successfully until May of 2011, when it became illegal for them to operate. 
At the time, the city attorney, Ian McCrager, said the town only stopped cannabis sales, not businesses. This statement got the people behind In Harmony to change their strategy instead of giving up on the cannabis industry altogether. Spokesperson Tina Valenti of In Harmony Wellness said that the business has blossomed and reorganized and become a patient resource organization now known as In Harmony Wellness Services in response to the needs of the medical cannabis population in Windsor, a town about an hour north of Denver. Instead of medical cannabis, the facility now offers instead physician services, classes and education, some retail products, and they have ingrained themselves back into the community that voted them out of town by sponsoring community events and cannabis advocacy initiatives. Valenti says that In Harmony Wellness is now dedicated to becoming the Central Cannabis Community Resource Center for Northern Colorado, just minus the actual cannabis. Valenti told the Denver Post that despite the battles that are still being waged across the state by small-town governments in an effort to ban safe access to medical cannabis, the overall response to the Colorado Medical Marijuana Program has been nothing short of overwhelming. Because of the opportunity to bear witness to the powerful and life-changing effect that medical cannabis has had for so many, In Harmony Wellness has responded with an organization whose main focus is to support those who have chosen this safe, effective option as medicine, end quote. In Harmony Wellness says they will continue the tradition of assisting patients in need and remain a patient service and advocacy center. If you live in Windsor or are close to the area, they are having an open house on Friday, September 23rd at 4 p.m. Head on over and lend your support to one can of business that didn't give up even after the town voted them down. Great job, and we wish them well. We do wish these guys well. Yes. (laughs) Wrong one there. Sorry about that. Studio audience is getting a little unruly. Uh, no, but this is good news because a lot, it, it's, you know, a lot of these medical marijuana businesses are going to have to face up to the fact that a lot of people don't see the medical in it when the sole thing they're doing is dispensing cannabis. Now, you and I know it's true, right? We know it's medicine. People have to get it from somewhere. But this is a smart PR move in integrating other holistic treatments, uh, massage therapies, patient services. Uh, all of these things can add more legitimacy to what we're trying to do here. But on the other hand, it is kind of odd that the people of this Windsor area don't seem to have a problem with the advocacy, the medical marijuana, teaching people to grow marijuana. It's the marijuana itself, the actual plant itself being bought and sold. And that's the, you know, the last remaining uh, linchpin of prohibition that we've got to work hard to remove is this idea that somehow the plant itself and the commerce specifically in this plant is evil or tainted or dirty or dangerous. It's none of those things. It's just another agricultural commodity. It's just another... uh, pharmaceutical remedy, well not pharmaceutical, but another remedy for us, another medicine. There's no reason that the rules that apply to all those other things, agriculture, medicine, can't apply to medical marijuana. But the reason why is because it's illegal for me. It's illegal for the healthy people to use it. And in, in order to maintain that distance between the two, we have all of these regulations and, and problems that occur in the medical marijuana states. Let's keep on working. Uh, Colorado's get, going a long way here. They've got to regulate marijuana like alcohol alcohol initiative going on. Lots of people working hard to legalize for everyone. Let's get it done and truly free up the patients. The governor of California, Jerry Brown, has now signed into law a regulatory bill that oversees dispensaries. Assembly Bill 1300 will go into effect on January 1st, 2012, and will give local law enforcement the authority to regulate the operation and location of marijuana collectives in California. He signed the bill on August 31st. The bill was created to clarify what local authorities are entitled to regulate and what restrictions marijuana collectives must adhere to. The bill was authored by Assemblyman Bob Blumenfield. Law enforcement will now be able to apply both civil and criminal penalties in order to protect the health and safety of the patients and the communities. The law also outlines legal tolerance for cultivation and possession of medical marijuana for patients and their primary caregivers. Los Angeles City Attorney Carmen Trutanich supported the bill and wrote in a letter stating AB 1300 would affirm the rights of cities and counties to enforce local regulations. Cities and counties have faced civil suits from marijuana collectives, which have sued on the basis that local 
local ordinances are inconsistent with state law and unconstitutionally discriminate against medical marijuana dispensaries. In the case City of Los Angeles v. Hill, the courts determined that nothing will prohibit a county from adopting ordinance or policies which would restrict the location or establishment of a medical marijuana dispensary. Despite the complexities of the legal debate, medical marijuana dispensaries continue to be a legal gray area. Americans for Safe Access opposed the bill's legislation and had urged its members to contact the governor to veto the bill. Chris Hermes, spokesman for Americans for Safe Access, has said that the storefront dispensaries are invaluable to patients, and by their estimates, a vast majority of the hundreds of thousands of legal patients in California rely on storefront dispensaries. Another opponent of medical marijuana who is touting this new regulation bill is L.A. County Sheriff Leroy Baca, or Baca, who said that the bill strengthens the ability of local jurisdictions to say, not here, when it comes to allowing dispensaries. But Hermes says the language of the bill is just vague enough to enable hostile local officials to, in uh, to interpret it to mean that they can place outright bans on medical marijuana distribution within city limits. He went on to say that without a dispensary in a town, that patients are driven to the illicit market to obtain medication, and that harms patients, harms society as a whole, and does not serve the general public. Cities and towns in California that have been hostile to medical marijuana dispensary businesses will now have the authority to keep them out, shut them down without fear of lawsuit. Many of those towns are already planning their move come January. Oh, boy. Uh, once again, I, I warned people about the pendulum swing. You know, everybody gets so uh, thrilled by the progress of medical marijuana. But as we've seen state after state passing it, it's become more and more restrictive. The last four jurisdictions to pass medical marijuana don't allow home grow. We're seeing lower and lower uh, possession amount limits, two ounces, one ounces for patients. We're seeing uh, seed, to, uh, seed to sale tracking and fingerprinting and data databasing of people in Colorado and now in Los Angeles and in California as a whole we're going to see all of these intemperate cities uh, shutting down medical marijuana dispensaries shutting down access so whether or not you can use a safe effective medicine will depend on geography it'll just depend on where you live if you're in the Bay Area you'll be okay if you're the Imperial Valley uh, you're just gonna have to do without and the thing is that they don't understand is by regulating this too strictly all you do like was mentioned by Chris Hermes is drive people to the black market. This can either be a legal regulated market or it can be an illegal unregulated market. But the market's not going away. The people who use marijuana as medicine will continue to use it as medicine no matter how you choose to regulate or not regulate it. Okay, uh, Washington State Democrats voted on Saturday to endorse Initiative 502, an effort to legalize marijuana with the distribution and sales put under the control of the state liquor board. In a dramatic 75-43 to 43 vote, the party added their stamp of approval on I-502. The Washington State Democratic Party Committee adopted a resolution that claims that thousands of Washington citizens are arrested, prosecuted, and convicted for simple marijuana possession each year, wasting millions of dollars in police, court, and jail resources. It also pointed out that legalization of marijuana under I-502 is expected to yield the state $215 million per year, with $80 million going into the state's general fund and the additional $135 million going towards substance abuse control. I-502 would break down revenue from marijuana in several ways. A full 50% of the tax revenue would go to Basic Health Washington, 15% to the Department of Social and Health Services for drug abuse treatment, and another 10% to DSHS for drug abuse education. Just under 20% would go to the general fund and administration. I-502 has drawn support from such liberal political figures as Seattle State Rep. Mary Lou Dickerson and Seattle City Attorney Pete Holmes, but it is also supported by John McKay, U.S. Attorney for Western Washington under the second Bush administration. Washington State Democrats sent out no announcement of the resolution that they adopted at the meeting that was held this weekend in Bellingham. Well, this is one of those good news, bad news things. It's good news when we see major political parties getting behind the uh, endorsing of marijuana legalization. It's bad news for those of us who are upset about the five nanograms per milliliter DUID language in I-502. And now with this uh, support by the Democrats, it's even less likely that the uh, supporters of 502 will pull the language and file something that's more friendly to patients. So it's uh, good news, bad news. I guess you got to take the good with the bad in this announcement. Uh, I would like to... Uh, 
uh, counsel the Democrats and counsel people uh, listening to the show uh, to look more into this DUID language and uh, understand uh, that the the what we've got in this statute, what we've got in this initiative, has no scientific basis. It has no basis in fact, and uh, I don't think that we should be uh, regulating and, and setting up legislation to replace uh, prohibition that has no basis in fact with our own legislation that has no basis in fact. <laughs> What do you think about a break, Russ? Oh, we got to have a break. We got to go kick Carrie's machine. Uh, it puked out on the Skype on her. But we'll be right back after some Electric Tuesday music. See ya. It's 20 after the hour. And we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, the reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Times Medical Cannabis Cup is coming to Detroit on October 15th and 16th. That's right. The world's premier medical marijuana competition will be in Motown to celebrate the cannabis economy of the Great Lakes State. It's a two-day expo at Burt's Warehouse Theater, showcasing the movers and shakers of the Michigan medical marijuana industry and the merchandise that makes the machine go. There will be seminars with leaders of the medical marijuana movement, doctors, patients, researchers, growers, dispensary owners, and activists. Plus, High Times own cultivation editors Danny Danko and Nico Escondido will roll into town with the goods on growing great ganja. Be there for an amazing Saturday night VIP party featuring top musical performances and special guests. High Times will award the Medical Cannabis Cup for top indicas, sativas, hybrids, concentrates, and edibles entered by Michigan's dispensaries and collectives. Come to Birch Warehouse Theater on October 15th and 16th. Visit MedCanCup.com for all the details. Celebrate cannabis in Michigan. Celebrate the resurgence of Detroit. Be part of the growing cannabis community. Hi, I'm Keith Strop, the founder of Normal. In all the years since 1970 that I've been fighting marijuana prohibition, I've learned that drug warriors love to confuse the public with statistics. Lately, they, they've claimed that there are more teens enrolled in drug treatment for marijuana than ever before. It's a statement that, while true, is intentionally misleading. What they don't tell you is that marijuana arrests have skyrocketed to over 800,000 arrests per year. They also don't tell you that we've gone from a few dozen drug courts in the 1990s to over 2,500 drug courts today. The kicker is that those drug courts sentence teens routinely to drug treatment for marijuana whether they need drug treatment or not. So they arrest more people for pot, require them to enter drug treatment, then claim the higher treatment numbers justify more pot arrests. It's an absurd proposition, but no more absurd than banning a plant. Learn the facts about pot. Visit norml.org today. You're listening to our daily toker tunes on Normal Show Live. Did somebody say science? In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapists will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. It's time for your daily toker tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. 
Today we bring you tunes for Electric Tuesday, our segment featuring the best of modern electric music in the genres of dance, new age, house, and experimental. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. All right, welcome back, everybody. Joining us in the studio is Greg, Cannabis Cure UK in the hizzy. What's happening, my man? What's up, Russ? Glad to see you. <laughs> hizzy, you've been down on your, your, your gangster speak. That's right, hizzy, weekend. that's gangster speak, that's right. So how, how are things going? When, when do you head back to the UK? Um, the ticket hasn't actually been bought, but we're looking at it. So we're just getting the right price on the right date around the 16th, 15th, 16th, and uh, just in time for the Peter Reynolds, uh, uh, the leader of Clear. He's having a, a head off with Peter Hitchens, who is the brother of Christopher Hitchens, who was in, right. in Pot We Trust. Right. Um, he is uh, a cancer. He has a throat. He's a throat cancer patient. He uses oh. cannabis <laughs> for that. Um, but his brother Peter Hitchens is a damn right reefer madness prohibitionist for the, oh. for the daily mail who would have thought uh, 30,000 deaths a year um, could oh, be that the, one, he yeah. could be the author of that so uh, that's going to be an interesting debate up in Manchester I'm going to get back and get the, get straight cannabis cure TV straight back in there that's awesome man glad to hear <sighs> it well we, it. we got you here for Electric Tuesday tell us uh -huh. about the uh, artist we're hearing today well this one is from Ganja White Knight I'm just going to read from their SoundCloud page which is uh, soundcloud.com for slash Ganja White Knight they're quite well known in the uh, Ganja world of the electric music. Ganja White Knight is a dubstep live act coming from Belgium to deliver some bouncy epic bass music to the world. Three guys ready to rumble any proper sound system with their killer sound, live and direct. Their sound is a mix between massive homemade tonal basses, organic bass beats and multi-ethnical flavours from different horizons. Their two first tracks, Strawberry Cough and Purple Star, were the starting point for them to develop their style of more sharp beats, explosive fat basses and tricky space melodies. <laughs> Some polyrhythmic acoustic sounds design able to create never heard sounds that can destroy any dance floor. They played live several places in Belgium alongside names as Beobinga, uh, amongst others. Lately they created their own digital label named Sub Carbon to get, the, uh, to, get to the next level and heard by the whole wide world. Ganja White Knight is a shout out to the dark and noisy world. For Europe, Asia, Africa booking, uh, go to Ganja White Knight at soundcloud.com and uh, check out this one. This is Confession. It's a real nice chill out tune and you can um, really get down and smoke to this one and relax. It's, I think we will. We got a full studio audience here and we got to have, have some time to uh, break it out. So let's get into it. This is Ganja White Knight with Confession. Church?
on for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker tunes from the main menu. As High Time Senior Cultivation Editor, I'm often called into the field and asked to sample or even identify exotic strains of marijuana in their natural habitat. Now, for the first time, I've compiled more than 120 of my favorite strains into this single field guide designed to fit into your pocket as you travel the world in search of your favorite plant. From a friend's closet grow room to the wilds of Northern California, this single guide covers all of today's best-known strains, plus heirlooms and throwbacks, including High Time quality photos and information on each variety's genetic heritage and growing characteristics, plus my personal notes on aroma, flavor, and potency. So this is Danny Danko, author of the official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains, wishing you good times and great ganja. The official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains is available at hightimes.com and finer bookstores. Normal Show Live reminds you to never consent to a search. If you're holding and you consent, in most states you will be arrested immediately and you will go to jail. If you don't consent to a search, police may try to intimidate you by threatening to bring in drug-sniffing dogs or try to fool you by saying things will go easier if you consent. Yeah, easier for them, sure. Stand your ground, refuse the search, and ask the officer if you're free to go. If they still detain you and eventually find your contraband, you'll be no more busted than if you had allowed the search. But by refusing the search, your attorney has a chance to win your acquittal before a judge. If you consent to the search, your attorney's hands are tied. You can find a list of normal legal committee attorneys specializing in marijuana cases by visiting the Find a Lawyer link at normal.org. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Normal, unlike any other marijuana or drug reform organization, is built from the ground up by grassroots activists. We are the Marijuana Smokers Lobby, and we aren't just anti-prohibition, we're pro-marijuana. Every week, we take some time to talk to the citizens of local normal chapters across the country and around the world, as well as others who are working to make a difference in the fight to end adult marijuana prohibition. In this segment, we call Grassroots Activism. All right, welcome back. We are uh, looking forward to this weekend, uh, specifically on Sunday, the Idaho Hope Fest. Hemp offers people everything, and joining us here to talk about it is the executive director of Idaho Normal, Isaiah Valdez. Isaiah, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back on, Russ. Ah, glad to have you here. And uh, so the, it's this Sunday at the uh, Julia Davis Park, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the acts and some of the speakers that you'll have there. Uh, well, sure. We'll be having some speakers from, coming from Montana uh, Caregivers Club, as well as 
uh, from Oregon Compassion Club that are there, as well as from uh, Washington uh, Fashion Cooperative over there. We'll also be uh, featuring live music at the band show, um, musical acts such as Voice of Reason, uh, Malachi, actual depiction of various lazy. We'll be coming to uh, perform as well. We'll be also having Ryan Davidson come speak, who is the who was part of the Idaho Liberty Lobby, which passed three uh, marijuana initiatives in Haley, Idaho, back in 2007 and 2008. So he'll be coming to speak. And you as well, Russ. Yeah, and uh, Cannabis Carry's coming along as well. Uh, uh, Iva Cunningham from Alternative Medical Choices will be there. A lot of the crew, they're, they're still making their plans, but uh, we I think we'll have a whole contingent coming from uh, Portland, Oregon, to come out there. So it's going to be a, a good time out there in Idaho. Now, uh, Izzy, as, you, as you're setting up this hemp, fest this hope fest uh in the julie davis park i mean i was stunned to hear that because this is the crown jewel park of boise it's right there in the in the center of town it borders boise state university it borders my beloved blue turf at boise at bronco stadium uh it's just i mean it's in visual sight of the capital uh, I, I actually played gigs in that amphitheater so i'm i'm really i'm thrilled that it's going to be there at julia davis did you get a lot of pushback or uh trouble trying to get that park specifically um we've faced uh, obstacles you know throughout the whole process um i think for the most part uh the parks and rec were very uh, um accommodating for us um a lot of the members of the boise city council as well were very receptive to our event and really they didn't give us much trouble um when we when we come to running it by the Boise Police Department, you know, they have obviously concerns about, you know, people lighting up at the park and engaging in illegal behavior at the park. Mm-hmm. So we're going, you know, back and forth. Um, we don't encourage any illegal activity or any illegal behavior at the park. So if you're planning on coming down, please try to uh, keep yourself out of jail and keep us from have running into problems with the Boise Police Department by not engaging in illegal activity or behavior at the park. Um, but, you know, we're just we're facing the biggest obstacles through them, so we have to make sure that we reassure them that no illegal activity is going to be happening at the event, you know, and of course we, we know it's because with the hemp theft, you know, peace and order is not going to be an issue. I mean, if it's, these type of events go by very peacefully. There's no fights. There's no alcohol that's going to be served, so you know, that's one less thing for people to to get aggressive over. Yeah, yeah. And but I, we're really, yeah, that's basically the, the biggest obstacle we're ever having to overcome is the Boise Police Department. But I think we will continue to work together, and this will be all uh, go off without a hitch. Yeah, I think so. And and people, you need to know the laws there in the state of Idaho. This is not Seattle Hemp Fest. This is not where the city attorney in Seattle said, no, I'm not going to prosecute minor marijuana possession. It's not where the mayor is speaking there at the Hemp Fest. This is Boise, Idaho, where being under the influence or using marijuana in public is a misdemeanor with a six-month jail term and a $1,000 fine. Uh, you can also lose your driver's license for all of that. And and possession of three ounces or less is another misdemeanor. One year incarceration, another $1,000 fine. If you've got paraphernalia on you, you got you, a pipe that you brought to the... Well, that's another misdemeanor. One year year thousand dollar fine and 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 god help you if you try to sell a pipe there at the hope fest paraphernalia sale or manufacture is a felony nine years in prison thirty thousand dollar fine in the state of idaho so uh isaiah i gotta say in that atmosphere you know fighting for marijuana regulation uh i really my hat's off to you man you you're taking a really brave stand has has it been personally Mm -hmm. difficult to be the marijuana legalizer in boise idaho um, well, I have a job I work on at, at the side, so, you know, having to juggle my work with being an activist, that's always hard to do because, you know, being an activist demands a lot of de- time and dedication, and as well as committing a lot of your own funding for, you know, printing and flyers and anything else that comes up. So, you know, that's a lot of a lot of the um, work that's necessary, a lot of the time that's been taken off of my just from, you know, dedicating all, every free moment I have to being an activist and helping promote this event. We're under a lot of pressure from, you know, the Boise Police Department. We're under a, a lot of 
criticism from conservative talk hosts, talk radio stations, a lot of conservatives out here. You know, definitely, we're not the most popular event out here, but it's definitely the right thing to do, and it's time to talk about this, you know, up in public settings. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like I've said many times on the show, I grew up in Idaho and I know what you're fighting against and and that those voices on the conservative talk radio, it's it's always amusing to me uh, to hear states' rights, limited government, we hate Obamacare, get government out between me and my doctor. I love hearing those guys being against marijuana legalization. (laughs) It's like, talk about twisting yourselves in knots. What do you do when you're trying to talk to these people to try to get through to them? Well, we, we tell them the same thing that you, know, you briefly explained, that it's a state's right issue and that federal government shouldn't be impeding on how states should govern their own laws, you know? And then when we bring up those subjects, you know, it starts to go through, oh, what about the kids? Or, you know, oh, what about drug use is going to skyrocket? And, oh, this is just going to lead to the decline of civilization as we know it and total anarchy across the board. And, you know, there's then we start to bring up the statistics and the facts. And, you know, there was even a radio talk show host who was talking about it earlier in, uh, in the week. And, you know, after so much debate, he finally was just like, I'm not going to talk about this anymore and just decided to stop talking, taking any more calls about it. So they're really just at the, they're really, they got their backs against the wall with all the rhetoric that has been spouted off for years about how this will lead to, you know, first it was, it'll lead to murder and homicidal behavior to it'll be the gateway drug now they're just running out of arguments at this point yeah good thing uh we're talking with isaiah valdez from idaho normal and your website is that idahonormal.org yeah the website for the idaho normal uh, group is idahonormal.org and if you'd like to find out more information about the hemp fest just go to idahohopefest.com or idahohempfest.com and also thought I'd add that we'll also be featuring um, a, a DJ tent, a DJ station with uh, nine different DJs no, okay. throughout the day providing some techno music. So there'll definitely be a, a bit of an atmosphere there as well to help you know, get people to experience. So It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be there as well. Boise, Idaho. And it's uh, this Sunday, uh, September 25th. What are the uh, times, the beginning and ending? The event runs from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. 10 so Sunday, one day only, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So show up early, show your support, and let's show the let's show Idaho that we're ready to move on and get out of the dark ages of these marijuana prohibition laws and start talking about legalizing it. Yeah, and you know, speaking of talking about legalizing it, we were just, uh, you and I were just out at the 45th Parallel, that town hall meeting out in Ontario, Oregon, and really, Ontario is almost Idaho, really. Uh, a lot of Idaho and, uh, were there, a lot of Idaho patients were there. When it comes to medical marijuana, I know you've had bills uh, introduced in the legislature, and you've got a uh, initiative that you're going through. Uh, what's the latest on those? What are the chances here, and, and what are some of the polling on medical marijuana in Idaho? Uh, well, our initiative, the Idaho Medical Choice Act, you know, is of course what we're currently is being circulated by Compassionate Idaho, which is an initiative to help to that says seriously ill patients um, will not be subject to arrest or prosecution for using medical marijuana um, recommended by the doctor. Um, it's the latest pollings in Idaho from the VSU Public Policy Survey back in earlier this year showed that. 74% of Idahoans supported medical access to marijuana. Hmm. Now, that's a very big number for Idaho. Yeah. And so we are very confident about collecting enough signatures to help put this on the ballot and help change laws once and for all. Uh, Tom Trail is also planning on introducing medical marijuana legislation in next year's state house. So if you can call your local representatives in Idaho, people that are listening, and just tell them that you support this and tell them that they should support this as well. The more we stand together and speak as one voice, it's going to be harder and harder for them to ignore us. I agree. And you're doing great work out there in Idaho. I encourage everyone to support Idaho Normal at IdahoNormal.org, forming the organization that I didn't even think was possible when I lived there. I'm so proud of you. Great work you're doing. Thank you very much, Russ. All right. We'll see you on Sunday. Isaiah Valdez from uh, Idaho Normal. Thanks for joining us here on Normal Show Live. When we come back, it's Tuesday, and that means it's time for Todd's Toker Topics. We're going to uh, take you around the world with marijuana when we come back right after this.
USV I normal go Broke down barrier Herb is medicine to Broke down barrier Boost the economy and Broke down barrier It's helping other states Broke down barrier Cannabis for legalized to Broke down barrier Join and speak your voice Broke down barrier We gonna change the law Broke down barrier We got to educate Broke down barrier Yeah, this is Nayora, you know Bigging up USV I normal Working to legalize cannabis, you know, for the whole of the Virgin Islands. USVI Normal is a nonprofit organization working to legalize cannabis for the use by the industries and responsible adults. Do your part. Join USVI Normal. Register to vote. Pass the word. Voice your opinion. You can change the law. Contact us for more information at 340-244-9179. You can also visit our website at www.usvinorml.org. Been busted? Need a lawyer? Call the Normal Legal Committee for an attorney near you. Find one at norml.org. Remember, attorneys are cheaper than a lifelong criminal drug record. Is that freedom? Freedom. I'm free to do it. What's up, guys? This is Miss High Times 2007, and you're chilling with us here at the Normal Podcast. Cannabis. Pop. Just say no. No matter what you call it, it's a huge part of popular culture. What'd you learn that, Cheech? Drug school. You don't need weed school. You just need a copy of the new book, Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. Hey, this is great, man. Even if you never smoked marijuana. I never used marijuana. Sorry. Don't think you smoked marijuana. I experimented with marijuana a time or two and didn't inhale. Or you used to smoke marijuana. I inhaled uh, frequently. That was, uh, that, was, that was the point. Pot Culture by former High Times editor Steve Bloom and Shirley Halperin will answer every question you ever had about marijuana culture. Uh, has that marijuana made it back up here yet? Check out Pot Culture, the A to Z guide to stoner language and life at Amazon.com or visit PotCultureBook.com today. Too bad, man. I just stopped smoking yeah. yesterday. Here at Normal Show Live, we spend all week taking a serious look at the tragedy of American marijuana prohibition. But it is important to take a break and remember that we are a vibrant, diverse, and oftentimes hilarious community of people. So on Tuesdays, our friend, comedian Todd Armstrong, or Goob the Knob on Facebook and Twitter, joins us to expose the lighter side of lighting up with Todd's Toker Topics. We love it when Tuesday comes around. Todd Armstrong in the house. How goes the comedy career, my man? Good, good. I uh, just headlined a show in Vancouver, my old uh, high school graduating town. Did really well. And then I'll also be headlining the Baghdad, the big the big show in Portland here on Friday. So oh, big. what's what's going on Friday? Uh, Friday night, 10 o'clock, I actually headline the Baghdad. I'm very, very excited. It's my first chance to headline a show in my hometown. So. I'll be there, oh, man. I mean, I'm excited. Like, I really, my mom's coming. They're staying up late and yeah. be a big jive for me. I've only been doing comedy like a year and eight months. So I get me to meet this, Cletus. You can meet Cletus, and I think my little brother will be there too. Uh, oh, wow. Cartilage laden Jake. Like, my, <laughs> my U- UFC cauliflower eared brother. Oh, like, you know, one of my prime rules prison in life tats all. <laughs> is never pick a fight with a guy with a cauliflower ear. Oh, I dig it. But this That's is the funniest the part about it is, uh, yeah, don't tell anybody, but he's used steroids. Yeah, I'm a pothead, but he's used steroids. Uh-huh. So uh, he injected a big old thing in his ass, and he's like completely bruised in his butt and he's like oh my god what's that and he's like oh check it out I did an injection site I took my time to strike and I punched him so hard in that bruise and ran away <laughs> and I totally won he kicked me in the leg so hard like my leg was numb for three hours at his child's birthday party but like I still feel I won <laughs> that's beautiful man alright so we've got Todd's Toker Topics and today's topic was uh, suggested by our own Cannabis Cure yes. UK so uh, handsome gentleman to my uh, left there stage, yeah. stage right stage right even yeah. so uh, what's on the uh, topic today uh, his suggestion last week was uh, weed around the world and I and I like that and uh, two things I want to focus on and talking about my brothers there's, there's always a that guy yeah and I think that weed always relates to that guy in a negative way and I haven't done much travel abroad but I, I'm, a, I'm a student of math and I'm a student of news and I love to do those things and I spent a lot of time in Costa Rica and that's surprisingly a crossroads of the world like I've met a lot of Australians a lot of Indians a lot of British uh, and so I, I realize that weed is throughout the world now from the northwest I know that this is a land that is often uh, known of, like as 
the land of lumberjacks with no ambition and broken dreams. But uh, we're all passive gardeners. We have a pretty open culture. We're allowed gardens. So, so weed's kind of ingrained in our culture. We're allowed to have it. Uh, even our laws are passive aggressive like we are. They don't really have a finite definition of what anything <laughs> is. Uh, but then it's a little bit different because the rest of the nation has a more ar- archaic approach to our old of the reefer madness is one of the first thing I want to talk about is that why the colonization of the world is based upon our prohibition. If you, if you look at where the, the basis of prohibition comes from, is often in the modern culture is from either the racist laws in Texas from the 1920s tied into the reefer madness culture, and then it transitioned back to Britain, where Britain still has a, a lagging approach to prohibition, where they, they view it as skunk, where it causes schizophrenia. Which is a quite an odd viewpoint because aren't people that are looking for relief from something go to something that provides relief? You know, is it the chicken that got the egg or is it the egg that got the chicken? See, you're left with vegans and no answer because they don't want to <laughs> deal with those issues. But uh, then also you have Africa where you the land of pyramids and diant word and blood diamonds, a very another broad, an, broad uh, culture. That's the number one producer in the world of marijuana. People don't notice that, but they don't call it marijuana there. They call it cannabis. Because most of the world still calls it cannabis, surprisingly, because they're not tethered into the racist laws of the 1920s, tethered back to our prohibition of the Americas. Because American century was the 20th century. That's where everything comes back for. If you look at the, before that, the reason this all comes down to is Americans, unfortunately, we are that guy. That's really what it comes down to. We're that guy. We're the person that said cell phones will never catch on. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we're the last guy with a rotary dial because we were the last ones to find out about cannabis. We were the last ones on the Silk Road. We were still thinking booze was the best thing out there. And then people showed up and they're like, wait a minute, you can smoke the things we make all of our crops and paper out of? And we looked like fools, like when we found out that they had cell phones. Pot is the world's cell phone. And it's still viewed that way across the entire world. India, Shiva's gift, it's tethered to sex upon religion in the most Middle Eastern cultures. Isn't that amazing? That our religious freedoms here in America are not open, but we're restrained from something that's a religious freedom across the world. Everyone knows Rastafarians. Everyone seems to paint themselves those colors at every festival you've ever seen tied to cannabis. You see those three damn colors everyone knows. But everyone knows it's actually tethered to the second coming of Christ. That's actually what Rastafarians believe, that the second coming coming of Christ, he already came back, and he was black, and he was Ethiopian. And then he kind of went to Jamaica with the slaves, and that sacrament was for them. But people don't want to talk about those viewpoints because they still think it causes the evil sex drug, like how we view it in America and still in Australia, where they still have the same staple, that it's an evil sex drug that's going to cause murder and rape. And we don't know what else, but we're not going to study it because we have pharmaceutical companies. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about real quick before we get out of here is where you can't control drugs, people are going to grow their own and they're going to call it cannabis. And where they can't grow their own cannabis, they're going to give you the drug they prescribe because it provides jobs for them. And uh, the last thing about I'd like to talk about on this is Thomas Jefferson said we cannot regulate taste, but we keep to constantly try to regulate taste. But why can't we be a little bit more like Amsterdam or Portugal and let us regulate our own taste? Because some things I don't want to put my mouth on and I don't, and some things I do want to put my mouth on and I do. And one of them is a vaporizer. So thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you next week. Have fun next Yay. Tuesday. John got me really high. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> weed around the world. But see, I, I don't have any experience other than uh, weed in the United States. Anybody here been outside? Of course, C- uh, Cannabis Cure has. Anybody else been outside oh, yeah. the U.S.? Uh, Mexico and Costa Rica <coughs> quite a bit for me, like yeah. on like scabby surf trips. And it's it's everywhere. Like it's it's the one thing that comes together. Not everybody does coke. Like that's sketchy to me. Like, yeah. but it's 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 always available. But people always seem to have a joint passed around. Yeah, it's like uh, <coughs> wasn't Danny, street food and weed. Everybody yeah. shares it. Yeah, it wasn't Danny Danko that was telling us that you know the international symbol. You just you do the international <laughs> symbol, and any, yeah. anybody in any culture is going to know. <coughs> thing, if someone walks Excuse up to you with food or a weed and they put it in your face, people will often take it and inhale it. But my my first experience with cannabis at all was uh, beer in the Czech Republic when I was 14 in a bar um, having THC beer. Yeah. It was Ooh. my first ever experience. So Wow. I mean, you know, it's always great listening to Rick Steves at the Hemp Fest and stuff talk about his experiences in Europe and, and taking uh, tour groups uh, when he comes upon some Moroccan who offers hash. Yeah. And and Rick Steves is all about, you know, well, I always try to give my 
people, all, all my uh, clients, a taste of what the real you know culture is. That's true. That's exactly so what it is. Yeah, and then that's another reason I didn't want to get off on the religious aspect too far on my toker topic, but it hash especially in, in, in pot it's it's a Muslim drug it's a Muslim based cultural drug hashish, hashish is just hashish. ingrained in the Muslim and the Uyghur and the in all the Highland people's culture the Middle Asia it followed the Silk Road it's ingrained these are all heirloom like we were discussing earlier these are heirloom seeds like it it's a real topic because across the world right now it's it's not the funniest topic right now because it's it's really an oppressive thing right now well, or yeah it, it's sad that we can't let it be what it is it is it's been a it's been this plant's been around before governments and it's <laughs> odd that a government tries to eradicate a plant and the only thing they seem to be able to do is eradicate other people and yeah. i find that to be odd but it's what it is. Well, I was listening to uh, Dean Becker's show the other night uh, on the network, and one of his guests said something that was just really profound to me, is that she said, uh, it's not, you know, when you look at the drug war and you look at it the way we look at it, it seems to be, you know, insane, irrational. But when you start uncovering what it's all about and realizing that it does what it's meant to do very efficiently, and that is remove uh, excess labor from the workforce. We don't have enough jobs for all these people. So we remove a lot of these people and we warehouse them and then we make more jobs for people that guard them and we give some fringe jobs to people that deal weed on the side. So it's kind of, when you look at the war on drugs as a jobs program and, and, a, and a response to a, a lack of labor or a lack of you know jobs for the labor that's out here because of all of the uh, transformation of our society with you know the computers in front of me and yeah. you know, all of the mechanization and autom automation has put a lot of people out of work and globalization that sent the jobs you know elsewhere boy it starts to look really really compelling when you look at it that way that's that's see to me i, I i'm a i'm a free market person I, I i i just got done last night on pbs again congratulations pbs uh they re-aired a milton friedman's documentary mm. and it, it just you view what hong kong is hong kong is the freest market on earth it's got a rough edge but when you try to deal with that why don't we just let the free market reign on cannabis? Let people produce products from it. Mm -hmm. If you look at how people created over there with just their medicine, from salves to tinctures to, to just flour to hash oil, and then across the board to clothing and food and, and fuels. I know it's not that the greatest perspective, but let us try it out. Mm -hmm. It's odd to shelve something. Let it be what it is. And let parents control their children from what the plant is. Let, let parents be what they, they're going to have to do anyways. You can't keep paying the schools for what they are. There's no tax dollars anymore. So let the parents be parents again and parent them with what this simple plant in the neighbor's backyard is. Yeah, and, and that's that's one of the things that frightens me the most is, you know, uh, people uh, who have young kids. And we tell stories like this all the time where the young kid gets into the stash and takes a bag to school, you know, and because and, they're just curious, want to show it off or whatever. Yeah, they're not like because mommy and daddy have to prize it for some reason. Mommy and daddy had to hide it and share it yeah, back. Yeah. If it was a common, like kids won't eat their freaking vegetables. They wouldn't give a shit what's growing in the garden. I can't get my nephew to eat basil on his pizza. He's not going to give a shit what's growing behind the basil. <laughs> there we go. Well, folks, uh, we got to wrap it up here for this first hour, this podcast hour. Thanks for joining us here on uh, Normal Show Live, and, and thanks to Todd for coming on in for Todd's Toker Topics. We're going to hang out in hour two. We've got a full studio audience of people hanging out here to talk about the Idaho Hope Fest, about what's happening here in Oregon, and much, much more. So those of you listening live, please stay with us. Those of you listening on the podcast, thanks for downloading, and tell your friends we've got... 420 24 7 365 here on the normal network something's always playing at live.normal.org give it a listen you might learn something for ganja john cannabis carry Wiz coleco cannabis cure todd armstrong and everybody else i'm radical russ thanks for joining us and until next time take care of each other tokers is Normal Show Live, the voice of the Marijuana Nation. Take it on one more time. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down to earth.